What you eating there, Steve? Nom nom. Oh, just some chicken. How could you? Don't you know, animals have rights? Yeah, a right to be eaten. <laughs> Did you know that a billion years ago, these chickens were dinosaurs? And if they were alive, they would have eaten you instead. Really? I didn't know. Yes. Would you like to eat something that would have eaten you instead? I mean, it didn't. Fine, I won't eat it. Be happy. Ah, oh, finally. Nice to be away from that crazy pants, Alex. What are you doing here, Steve? Ah, oh, what is it now? Don't you know that these are our cousins? How could you stay silent and watch them being locked up? I mean, look at them. There's literally no difference between you and them. Yeah, I don't see it. Wait, what are you doing? Our cousins deserve to be freed. Go now, you're free. Wait, what are you doing? No, your cousins. This is why I hate relatives. No. Anyhow, until next time, my fellow eight. Until next time, my fellow eight. Next time, my fellow eight. Fellow eight. Fellow eight. Fellow eight. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Islamic Defense Podcast. You know, I've been wanting to make a video on evolution for a long time. Evolution has been used to justify all kinds of awful things, whether it's genocide, racism, etc. Recently, I found something that shocked me to my core. Uh, I saw a documentary on, on a YouTube channel, it talked about scientific racism. When I heard about it, I thought that this has got to be some kind of a joke and it was not something I was aware of, so I started watching. According to the documentary, in the year 1859, three months after Charles Darwin wrote his Origin of Species, an American promoter, P.T. Barnum, opens a zoo in New York City. Except the thing was that it wasn't a zoo of animals, it was a zoo of human beings. They claim that they found one of the closest species of animals that has a direct link on evolution from apes to African black people. Now, the zoo authorities displayed one of them as a sample of this species. They called him the man monkey. They displayed him as the missing link in the evolution. You know, the missing link between humans and apes or chimps. When in reality, it was simply a black man named William Henry Johnson. The media jumped on this opportunity. Uh, to promote this new discovery, not knowing that this is a hoax. So, at the same time, the New York Tribune declared that in their title that this performer seems to be a cross between an ape species and the N-word. I cannot say that because YouTube would kill me. But yeah, so another example came in the year of 1880. They put a woman who had a rare genetic disease, who had hair growing all over her body, and they promoted her as being a living proof of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution in his Descent of Man. They named her Crow. In the 1880s, there was Crow, promoted as living proof of Darwin's theory of the Descent of Man. She was described as a perfect specimen of the step between man and monkey. Actually, Crow was a young woman from Southeast Asia who suffered from hypertrichosis, a rare genetic condition that produces excessive hair. Now, the reason I'm telling you all this is because evolution is oftentimes used by atheists to justify a lot of terrible things. It's almost as if it has become their new religion. So it's no surprise uh, that it has become one of the most biggest weapon against religion, especially Abrahamic ones. Now, I personally don't have an issue with Darwin being a racist. I mean, the man lived in like 18th century, so it's no surprise that he had racist views. However, what I do have an issue with is his ideas being used and time and time again to justify racism. 
genocide and oftentimes extreme levels of bigotry against religious people. Darwin may not have been involved in them, but Darwinism, or more specifically scientism, the dogmatic belief that science is the only way to the truth and things like religion and philosophy are just nonsense, is what made things like racism, scientific racism, or you know, some of the genocide that happened possible. Unfortunately, atheists are the biggest promoters of scientism because it is their biggest weapon against the religious narrative. And trust me, they don't promote it because it's true, but because it supports the narrative. Recently, I saw this one video where a group of atheists tried to defend Darwinism from racism in such a horrible way that it made my stomach churn. Here, take a look. I, I mean, uh, I would say that the uh, that the racial views of Darwin would have been complicated because, I mean, after all, he lived in the 19th century when everybody was somewhat racist. I mean, he uses the word well, Negro a lot and he talks about yeah, right. superior races. If you go back uh, and see some of the most admired people in the history of this country, I mean, Thomas Jefferson famously uh, owned right. slaves Got and them pregnant. Uh, did yeah. other stuff with them, yes. Uh, well, oh, but, uh, and even if he was racist, what difference does it make? That's what I'm saying. Well, it's uh, to his theory, you know, to the you know, oh, yeah, yes. to the to the accuracy of you know evolution by natural selection. I mean, he uses the word well, Negro a lot, and he talks about yeah, right. superior races. I mean, he uses the word well, Negro a lot, and he talks about yeah, right. superior races. So their argument seems to be. Ah, Darwin wasn't the only racist, you know? I mean, we had many other scientists who were also racist. So, you know, it's okay once in a while if you want to promote your racism with, your, with a little bit of science, you know? You shouldn't be criticized for that. Yeah, you see, this is a straw man. The problem isn't that these scientists or atheists were racist. No, 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 no. The problem is that Darwinism itself is racist. The problem isn't that the, isn't the people, it's the idea. The idea of natural selection being more than just a theory. The idea that natural selection can be applied on a social level, that it can be promoted as something objectively true without question, this is problematic. Now, this idea has spread like cancer by the atheists and quote-unquote science popularizers or enthusiasts. New atheist gurus like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris promote evolution like some kind of new religion, as if it's objectively true. Here, take a look. The word theory can be used to mean something speculative and tentative. In everyday speech, it probably usually is used in that sense. Scientists very often use it in a much more positive sense. I think the easiest way is to use the ordinary language word fact. In the ordinary language sense of the word fact, evolution is a fact. So, <laughs> it's kind of interesting that Richard Dawkins calls this a fact. Uh, so, if evolution is a fact, it logically follows that in the year 18th century, when black people were considered to be the closest to apes, and everyone who believed that was not a racist because it was just a scientific fact, right? So, let me just put this uh, argument in a logical form ex by accepting the premise. Premise 1. Evolution is a fact. Premise 2. According to evolution, in the 18th century, black people were the closest to apes. Conclusion. Therefore, in the 18th century, black people were less human than white people. Because, you know, they're the closest to uh, chimps or apes. Now, you see the problem here with this Richard Dawkins argument? If evolution is a fact, then that means in the 18th century, racism was factual. It means it was a fact that black people were less than white people, a scientific fact. So much so that the human zoo actually had a special showing for scientists. And these were some of the most leading scientists of the time. I mean, Darwin himself promoted this idea. But the quest to dramatize the lower stages of human evolution eventually reached far beyond freak shows. It ultimately involved the most elite members of the scientific community and it was given a platform at one of the most celebrated events in early 20th century America.
The man behind the human zoo was anthropologist William McGee. One of the nation's leading scientists, McGee had already served as acting president of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. In 1903, he was asked to head the anthropology department for the World's Fair. McGee had grand plans of presenting the story of human evolution by displaying representatives of what he considered lower stages of the human race. McGee's plans reflected the ideas of mainstream anthropology of the time. Anthropology was kind of founded on this idea of mapping um, civilization from the highest to the lowest, right? With the lowest at that time said to be Africans, and then you sort of move up. Leading men of science from Harvard and Princeton and Columbia University were saying that Africans were midway between an orangutan and a human being. German scientist Ernst Haeckel helped popularize the idea. Ernst Haeckel was the leading German Darwinist in the late 19th and early 20th century. Uh, he corresponded extensively with Darwin, and uh, Darwin recognized uh, Haeckel's affinity with his own theory. Ernst, and in fact, he had a graphic of the history of human evolution that, in very pointed terms, really embedded a racist view of human evolution. You had the Teutonic male on the top, the sort of the Germanic male, and then at the bottom, you had some creatures that looked uh, partly like apes, partly like Jews. He was also anti-Semitic. And in the middle, you had the transition from the ape-like creatures to the first human creatures. The ape-like creatures look pretty much like they're Africans. So, using Darwinism, you can easily justify racism, because apparently it was a fact. But wait a minute, wasn't, wasn't scientific racism debunked by modern scientists? Well, according to Dr. Robert Sussman, an eminent uh, physical anthropologist at Washington University in St. Louis and the author of The Myth of Race, the troublesome uh, persistence of an unscientific idea in an interview in, in a Huffington Post article, he said that apparently race doesn't even exist. Or at least according to him, most scientists don't think that race exists. Here's what he said. Most biologists, genesis, uh, uh, geneticists and anthropologists have discarded the concept of race. This was because it was uh, always difficult to describe characteristics that made up a race and who was in what race. Now, this sentiment is then later shared by a uh, seeker, uh, shared by Seeker, which is a popular YouTube channel, science enthusiast YouTube channel. First of all, it is time that we start teaching our kids, as soon as they can talk, and adults for that matter, that there is no biological basis for racial classification. In terms of biology, race doesn't exist. Now that's not to say race isn't real, though it's important to understand that race is a cultural construct, that humans created this and it has nothing to do with our biology. You know what's funny? In the, in the 18th century, these same scientists were arguing that black people are subhuman and that they should be put in cages. Now, just a few hundred years later, the same scientists are now saying that no, 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 actually race doesn't even exist. <laughs> so which one is it? Is black people subhuman and should be put in cages or is race doesn't or does race not exist? Because they both can't be true at the same time. This creates an even bigger problem for Mr. Richard Dawkins. If evolution is a fact, then why is evolution changing its mind every hundred years? I mean, in the 18th century, Africans were subhumans, and now all of a sudden we don't have any, ha have any difference at all? I mean, this exposes the absolute hypocrisy in the scientific community. There's no such thing as facts in science. I mean, in the 18th century, they came up with this ridiculous racist idea because that was the social norm. That was normal. Now that the social norm has changed and, has, and everyone has become more progressive and, you know, it's all about equal rights, all of a sudden, race doesn't even exist, which is why we're getting all kinds of scientific theories that supports things like racial equality, because the new scientific norm is about being progressive and liberal. You see, science is not driven by the pursuit of truth, but by the cultural norm and political agenda. Now, I don't want to sound like some kind of crazy right-wing nonsense people, but this that's exactly what's going on. <laughs> 
But anyway, so obviously I'm not saying all scientists are like this. But if anyone argues that science is all about being neutral, you know, scientists are like little angels that has no bias, you know, they need a smack in the head. Science is run by human beings. They are not immune to human problems. They can be just as biased and can make many mistakes just like anyone else. Just like with religious extremists. They are no different. So here are my arguments to the new atheist. Premise 1. According to Richard Dawkins, evolution is a fact. Premise 2. If it is a fact, then it is objectively true and anything that is objectively true cannot change over time. Premise 3. We see that evolution have changed over time. Conclusion. Therefore, evolution is not a fact. Now, the truth is, as much as the new atheists like to spread lies about science, there is no fact in science. According to physicist and philosopher of science Thomas Kuhn, who in his book The Structure of Scientific Revolutions, said that scientists like to work in a paradigm. So a paradigm basically means a dominant scientific theory or, or a model or a method. When this method stops working for either because of contradicting evidence or change in leadership or politics or whatever, whatever have you, the model changes. So when a scientific model or paradigm changes, it is known as, the, as a paradigm shift. For example, Ibn al-Haytham Ibn al changed the paradigm of Greek science of Aristotle. Then Newton created a new paradigm which was then changed by Einstein. Then Einstein's paradigm was changed by the theory of Big Bang which was proposed by Belgian priest Georges Lemaitre. Now the point is science changes all the time based on new evidence. It is called the paradigm shift. Now it could be either be a small change or a big change. Same things happen with evolution because I mean before it was used to justify racism and now it's used to debunk it. <laughs> which is why you can never use science to make any type of objective claim. 